first, I would like to wish Professor Savin a happy birthday and also to thank all the organizers of this wonderful workshop for inviting me here and giving me this opportunity to present my research. I am going to talk about some topological aspects of smooth automorphic forms. This is joint work with Harald Grobna. The idea of replacing the classical automorphic forms by the so-called smooth automorphic forms, i.e. not necessarily k-infinity finite automorphic forms, is not new and is well known to the experts. For example, in his 1989 paper, Castleman, motivated by then newly developed theory of castleman wallach completions, remarked that one plausible and perhaps useful extension of the notion of automorphic form would be to include left gamma invariant complex smooth functions on the group G of uniform moderate growth, which are Z of G finite, but not necessarily K finite. Nowadays, smooth automorphic forms are becoming a standard part of modern representation theory. For example, they appear in the 2012 formulation of global gangrose prasad conjectures, as well in the 2020 proof of those conjectures or endoscopic unitary groups by Buzard Flesis, Chaudoir, and Zidor. While a detailed study of smooth automorphic forms has begun, for example, in 2016, Moich proved some explicit results on construction of cuspidal smooth automorphic forms using Poincare series. We still don't know very much about the basics of representation theory of smooth automorphic forms. Let us look at the very basic question of how to define a topology on interesting spaces of smooth automorphic forms in such a way that these spaces become smooth group representations. The existing literature on smooth automorphic forms, which is very sparse, shows that the experts have a very good intuition on how this topology should look like, but also that working with this topology involves some easy to miss intricacies stemming from the fact that this topology is not fresher. In this talk, I will tell you a bit about these intricacies and also about the relation between the classical automorphic representations and the naturally defined smooth automorphic representations. Let us start with some notation. Throughout this talk, let G be a connected reductive group defined over a number field F with Adele ring A and the subring of finite Adels, which we will, uh, and the subring of finite Adels of A we will denote by AF. Let S, S infinity, and SF be respectively the set of non trivial places of F, the set of Archimedean places of F, and the set of non Archimedean places of F. We define the Lie group G infinity by this formula, where FV is the completion of F at a place V and denote by small g infinity the Lie group of g infinity, the Lie algebra of the Lie group g infinity. Uh, let u of g be the universal enveloping algebra of the complexified Lie algebra g infinity, and let z of g be the center of this universal enveloping algebra. Next, let us fix a minimal parabolic f subgroup phi zero of g and its Levy decomposition and use this choice to define standard f parabolic subgroups of G. Moreover, let us fix a maximal compact subgroup Ka of G of A that is in good position with respect to this choice of standard parabolic, parabolic subgroups. We will denote by K infinity the projection of Ka to G infinity and by Kaf the projection of Ka to G of AF. We will also need a fixed decreasing cofinal sequence of compact open subgroups Kn of G of AF. Finally, let us define the subgroup G of A1 of G of A by this formula where chi goes over the group of F rational characters of G. And let us define in a standard way the Lie group AGR, which is a Lie subgroup of G infinity, 
such that G of A decomposes into a direct product of AGR and G of A1. I will denote by bracketed G the quotient of G of A by G of F AGR. Recall that this quotient is of finite volume. Next, let us recall uh, the smooth functions of uniform moderate growth on G of A. First, we fix an embedding defined over F of our group G into a general linear group and use this embedding to define an Adelic group norm on G of A by this formula. We say that a complex left G of F invariant function uh, that is smooth on G of A is of uniform moderate growth of a non-negative integer exponent d if for every x in the universal enveloping algebra, the function p dx defined by this formula has a finite value at f. Let us denote by c infinity umg d of g the space of all such functions. One sees easily that if we equip this space with the locally convex topology defined by Semenov's PDX, we do not obtain a Frechet space because the space we obtain is not complete. However, for every strictly positive integer n, the Semenov's PDX do define a Frechet topology on the subspaces of Kn invariants in C infinity umg d of g. So these are right Kn invariant functions in C infinity umg d of g. Note also that the union of all of these substances of KN invariants is the whole space C infinity UMG D of G. Whenever we find ourselves in such a situation, more generally, whenever we are given a sequence of complex Hausdorff locally convex spaces VN, such that for every N, VN is a closed topological vector subspace of VN plus one, we can turn the union of spaces VN into a locally convex space called the strict inductive limit of the sequence Vn and denoted by this symbol, defined by equipping the union of substances Vn with the finest locally convex topology with respect to which the inclusions maps of all substances Vn into the union are continuous. The locally convex topology defined in this way has some very nice properties. The original spaces Vn are closed topological subspaces of, this, of the strict inductive limit. Moreover, if each of the original spaces Vn is complete, then so is the strict inductive limit. The same holds for barrelness. In most of our examples, the original subspaces Vn are going to be Frechet. When this is the case, we call the strict inductive limit of the sequence Vn an LF space. Equipped with this notion, we can define an LF topology on the space of left G of F invariant uh, smooth functions on G of A of uniform moderate growth of exponent D by this formula. In this way, C infinity UMG D of G becomes a Hausdorff complex barreled and complete locally convex space, but it is not Frechet. In a similar way, we will define an LF topology on the space, on some interesting spaces, let's say, of smooth automorphic forms on G of A, which are defined as all functions of uniform moderate growth on G of A, of course, left G of F invariant, such that they are Z of G finite. Of course, the classical automorphic forms on G of A are now simply all smooth automorphic forms that are additionally k infinity finite. Recall that the space A of G of all classical automorphic forms is not invariant under the action of G of A with, by right translations. It is just a G infinity k infinity G of A F module. But the space A infinity G of all smooth automorphic forms in G of A is G of A invariant. And so are its subspaces, A infinity J of G, where 
J is a fixed ideal of finite codimension in the center of the universal developing algebra, defined as the spaces of those smooth automorphic forms which are annihilated by some power of J. These spaces are going to be the main topic of my talk. To define an LF topology on them, it is useful to first fix for the rest of this talk an ideal J of finite codimension in Z of G, and then note that all smooth automorphic forms in the space A infinity J of G have the same, have a common exponent of uniform moderate growth D. Having fixed such an exponent D, we can look at the space of those smooth automorphic forms, which are right KN invariant and annihilated by the nth power of J. We can do this for every strictly positive integer N and regard the space we obtain as a closed subspace of the fresher space of right KN invariant functions of uniform moderate growth of exponent D. In this way, these little spaces become fresh spaces that in union give the whole space A infinity J of G. And they are obviously a good one to another in the sense that um, each one of them is a closed subspace of the next one. Thus, we can define an LF topology on A infinity J of G by this formula. Yes. Does it depend on the choice of D? Oh, oh very good question. I was planning to tell that, but I forgot. So thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, it is very easy to see that, in fact, uh, the, the, the fresh topology defined on these spaces A infinity G of K and J to the N. Um, does not, uh, this topology does not depend on our choice of such an exponent D. This follows easily from the open mapping theorem which holds for fresh spaces. Um, we have proved that under right translations, the space A infinity J of G equipped with this topology is a smooth representation of G of A, meaning the following. Let V be a complete complex Hausdorff locally convex space, and let phi be a continuous representation of G of A on V. Let us equip the naturally defined space of G infinity smooth vectors in V with the locally convex topology defined by the SEMA norms that are obtained by composing the operators phi of X, where X goes over the universal developing algebra, with continuous SEMA norms P on V. Moreover, let us define the space of globally smooth vectors in V as the strict inductive limit of the closed substances of K and invariant functions in the space of G infinity smooth vectors. We say that our representation pi is a smooth representation of G of A if we have the equality of spaces V and V infinity A as locally convex topological vector spaces. Equivalently, uh, pi V is a smooth representation of G of A, provided that we have two equalities, V equals V infinity R and V equals the strict inductive limit of the subspaces V to the KN. In other words, V is a smooth representation of G of A, if and only if it is a smooth representation of G infinity and a smooth representation of G of A F in the standard sense. Now let me uh, repeat once again that we were able to prove that when acted upon by, uh, act, acted upon, uh, by right translations, the space A infinity J of G is indeed a smooth representation of G of A. Uh, next, I would like to introduce in a natural way the notion of smooth automorphic sub-representations and representations. First, let us recall the classical automorphic representations and sub-representations. Let us denote by AJ of G, 
the space of, of all classical automorphic forms that have annihilated by a power of J. Equivalently, this is simply the J infinity K infinity G of A F submodule of K infinity finite vectors in A infinity J of G. Throughout this talk, for simplicity, whenever I say a classical automorphic subrepresentation, I will think of a G infinity K infinity G of A F submodule of A J of G. And whenever I say a classical automorphic representation, I will think of a G infinity K infinity G of A F subquotient of the space A J of G. An analogy with this, let us define a smooth automorphic subrepresentation as any closed G of A invariant subspace U of the space A infinity J of G, and a smooth automorphic representation as any quotient representation U modulo W, where U and W are some closed G of A invariant subspaces of A infinity J of G, and of course W is contained in U. Uh, now, these two definitions seem benign enough, but in fact, there might be some hidden trouble here. Namely, uh, it turns out that a closed subspace of an LF space is not always an LF space itself. Recall that A infinity J of G is an LF space. It is not a fresh space. So there might exist smooth automorphic subrepresentations with whose topology is not the LF topology. Uh, also, quotients have their own problems. Namely, it turns out that uh, if we take a quotient of a complete Hausdorff locally convex space by its closed subspace, what we obtain is not necessarily complete. This means that in this definition here, uh, the, we implicitly assume that U and W are not only some closed G of A invariant subspaces of A infinity J of G such that W is contained in U, but we also implicitly assume that the quotient U modulo W is complete. If this is the case, then the quotient representation U modulo W is well defined. Uh, namely, we are working with the standard definition of continuous representations of G of A in which the underlying uh, vector space has to be complete. Um, now, there is some light in uh, this story. Namely, we were able to prove that if U is small enough, if we have a smooth automorphic subrepresentation U um, that is finitely generated as a representation of G of A, uh, more generally, if we have a smooth automorphic subrepresentation U which is annihilated by a power of J, then it is an LF space and every quotient of U by some closed G of A invariant subspace is also an LF space. But for general smooth automorphic subrepresentations U, uh, these are open questions. Uh, next, let us look at a natural question of whether taking the subspaces of K infinity finite vectors defines a one one correspondence between smooth automorphic representations and classical automorphic representations. First, let us look at automorphic subrepresentations. Uh, we proved that if V0 is a classical automorphic subrepresentation, then its closure in A infinity J of G is a smooth automorphic subrepresentation. We were also able to prove that taking K infinity finite vectors in one direction and taking closures in the other direction defines a one one correspondence between the set of admissible smooth automorphic subrepresentations and admissible classical automorphic subrepresentations. Moreover, this one one correspondence restricts to a one one correspondence between irreducible smooth automorphic subrepresentations and irreducible classical automorphic subrepresentations. In particular, every irreducible smooth automorphic subrepresentation is admissible. In order for me to tell you what we know about uh, general automorphic representations, let me introduce the notion of Casamon-Volak representations 
named in honor of their importance in the theory of Castleman Volar completions. First, recall that our representation pi of G infinity on a fresh space V is said to be of moderate growth if, of, if for every continuous seminorm P on V, there exists a strictly positive integer M and a continuous seminorm Q, Q on V, such that this inequality holds for all G in G infinity and all V in V. Now, we say that a, custom, that a smooth representation pi V of G infinity of moderate growth, which is necessarily defined on a fresh space V, is a custom of arc representation of G infinity if its G infinity K infinity module of K infinity finite vectors is admissible and finitely generated. And we define a custom of arc representation of G of A as any smooth representation pi of G of A such that for every strictly positive integer n, the subspace of kn invariant vectors in V is a custom of Oak representation of G infinity. Uh, quite a few interesting smooth automorphic representations are custom of Oak representations. Uh, but before I <laughs> show you some of them, uh, let me just uh, mentioned that Volk's result on custom of Volk representations of G infinity easily imply that the class of custom of Volk representations um, of G of A is closed under taking quotients and taking closed subspaces. Uh, and also that uh, we have the fundamental fact that two custom of Volk representations of G of A are equivalent if, if and only if they are infinitesimally equivalent more precisely, if and only if their G infinity, K infinity, G of A, F modules of K infinity finite vectors are isomorphic. And now let me show you some smooth automorphic sub representations, which are custom of Volk representations. We show that every finitely generated smooth automorphic sub representation is a custom of Volk representation of G of A. In particular, every irreducible smooth automorphic sub representation is a custom of arc representation of G of A. On the other hand, it follows from the definition of custom of arc representations of G of A that all of them are admissible. In particular, every finitely generated smooth automorphic sub representation is admissible. And now we are ready for our results on automorphic sub quotients. It is not too hard to prove that. If V is an irreducible smooth automorphic representation, then it's G infinity K infinity G of A F uh, module of K infinity finite vectors is an irreducible classical automorphic representation. This in particular implies that every irreducible smooth automorphic representation is admissible. As for one one correspondences, the only one we have uh, for now is that taking K infinity finite vectors in an irreducible Kassim and Volak smooth automorphic representation defines a bijection from the set of equivalence classes of irreducible Kassim and Volak smooth automorphic representations to the set of equivalence classes of irreducible classical automorphic representations. Of course, the natural question is if the word custom and Volak here is redundant. This is an open question. We do not know if every irreducible smooth automorphic representation is a custom and Volak representation. We only know that irreducible smooth automorphic sub representations are custom and Volak. It would be very nice if it turned out that all irreducible smooth automorphic representations are custom of Volk representations of G of A, uh, because for irreducible smooth automorphic custom of Volk representations of G of A, we have uh, a smooth variant of the well-known tensor product theorem, which states that if we uh, take pi to be such a representation, then for each place 
V, there exists a unique reducible smooth admissible representation, uh, pi V of G of F V, which is of moderate growth if V is Archimedean, such that as G of F representations, we have this equivalence of representations. Here, the first tensor product is the completed projective tensor product. The second tensor product is the completed inductive tensor product. And the third tensor product is the restricted tensor product equipped with the finest locally convex topology. Uh, let me emphasize that this result for smooth automorphic representation is uh, in fact not new. It has been mentioned, for example, in Cogdell's notes on L functions, but uh, in no text I know uh, has the topology on the right-hand side been specified. Uh, the last natural question I would like to discuss in this talk is if the famous direct sum decompositions of the space of classical automorphic forms annihilated by a power of J along parabolic and cuspidal support have their smooth automorphic counter counterparts. Uh, we gave a positive answer to this question. And the way we did it is we identified a special class of smooth automorphic sub-representations, uh, which inherit practically any uh, decomposition of their G infinity, K infinity, G of AF module of K infinity finite vectors into sub-modules. This class of smooth automorphic sub-representations we call LF compatible smooth automorphic sub-representations. We say that a smooth automorphic sub-representation V is LF compatible if, uh, excuse me, if we have this equality of topological vector spaces. So if V equals the strict inductive limit of its subspaces of right K and invariant uh, functions, which are uh, annihilated by the end power of J. By its definition, A infinity J of G is the first obvious example of an LF compatible smooth automorphic uh, sub-representation. We also proved that its closed subspace of AGR invariant uh, smooth automorphic forms annihilated by a power of J is also LF compatible. And so are all smooth automorphic sub-representations which are annihilated by a power of J so, for example, every finitely generated smooth automorphic sub representation is LF compatible. Now, LF compatible smooth automorphic sub representations have this crucial, wonderful property concerning direct sum decompositions. If we have an LF compatible smooth automorphic sub representation V that decomposes into a direct sum of it's G infinity, K infinity, G of AF submodules V0I. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if I said uh, it's some module K of K infinity finite vectors. Um, it's module of K infinity finite vectors decomposed into a direct sum of G infinity, K infinity, G of AF submodules V0I. Then uh, we have the following decomposition into a locally convex direct sum of LF compatible smooth automorphic sub representations of our representation V. V is simply the locally convex direct sum, which we denote by this convenient symbol of the closures of the modules V0i in A infinity J of G. So to recapitulate, whenever we have a nice direct sum decomposition of the subspace of K infinity finite vectors, we immediately obtain the locally convex direct sum decomposition of our representation V into a closed G of A invariant subspaces, which are also LF compatible. Uh, this enabled the, us to prove uh, the direct sum decomposition of uh, our space of smooth automorphic forms annihilated by power of J along parabolic support. To state the result, uh, let me first remind you that a function F on G of A, which is left G of A invariant and of uniform moderate growth, is negligible along a parabolic F sub of P. 
with Levy decomposition L times N. Uh, if it's constant term along P uh, translated uh, on the right by any G in G of A is orthogonal to any cuspidal automorphic form on uh, L of A modulo L of F A L R. <laughs> Um, here, we can take the, these cuspid automorphic forms to be either the classical cuspid automorphic forms or the uh, cuspid smooth automorphic forms. Denoting by uh, P uh, in um, curly brackets, the associate class of P, let uh, C infinity UMG P of G denote the space of those functions smooth of uniform moderate growth and of course, left G of F invariant that are negligible along every uh, parabolic subgroup which is not in the class, associate class of P. Uh, next, let us denote by A infinity JP of G uh, the subspace of such smooth automorphic forms annihilated by a power of J, and by A JP of G the subspace of classical automorphic forms annihilated by a power of J that are negligible along uh, every parabolic subgroup that is not in the associate class of P. Now, finally, we can state uh, our result on parabolic decomposition of A infinity J of G. Uh, recall uh, Langlitz's famous algebraic direct sum decomposition of the space of smooth functions of uniform moderate growth uh, on G of A modulo G of F into the subspaces C infinity UMG P of G, which I just defined. This decomposition easily implies the algebraic direct sum decomposition of the uh, G infinity K infinity G of AF module of classical automorphic forms annihilated by power of J into the subspaces AJP of G, also defined on the previous slide. And also we have the algebraic direct sum decomposition of, of the same for, for, form for smooth automorphic forms annihilated by a power of J. Our proposition 10 enables us uh, to deduce that in fact, this compo decomposition for uh, smooth automorphic forms is a topological decomposition into a locally convex direct sum of LF compatible smooth automorphic sub-representations. Uh, let me mention that this result actually can be proved uh, by more elementary means not using proposition 10, but it is a nice first example of its use nonetheless. However, when we have uh, direct sum decompositions into infinite families of G infinity, K infinity, G of AF submodules, then we really need to use our crucial proposition 10. This is the case, for example, when we try to look at uh, the decomposition of the space of cuspidal smooth automorphic forms annihilated by a power of J. And it's the composition which we proved to be true into a locally convex direct sum of the spaces of smooth vectors in certain irreducible smooth automorphic sub-representations. More precisely, what we did is take a look at the famous theorem of Gelfand and Piatetsky Shapiro, which states that the space of L2 functions on the, on the quotient bracketed G that are cuspidal decomposes into an orthogonal sum of irreducible closed G of A invariant subspaces. This very easily implies that there exists a subset of the index set I such that the uh, space of all cuspidal automorphic forms on our quotient bracketed G, which are annihilated by a power of J, uh, decomposes into a direct sum of uh, the spaces of smooth, autom uh, of smooth vectors, uh, which are also K infinity finite in the corresponding representations HI. Applying our proposition 10 to this direct sum decomposition, we obtained the theorem 12, which states that the space of smooth cuspidal automorphic forms annihilated by a power of J and AGR invariant 
decomposes into a locally convex direct sum of uh, the spaces of smooth vectors in exactly these uh, irreducible representations HI. More generally, uh, we took a look at um, Ranke Schwermer's decomposition of the spaces AJ, P of G, of which AJ cusp of G here is a special case obtained when the associate class of P is the associate class of G. Uh, Frank and Schwermer proved that for every associate class P of standard uh, of FR book summers of G, we have the decomposition of the space AJP of G into a direct sum of some G infinity K infinity G of A as some modules AJP phi of G, where the index set uh, through which phi goes is the set of suitable associate classes phi of irreducible cuspidal automorphic sub-representations of Levy components of elements of the associate class of P. Uh, these cuspidal automorphic sub-representations can again be, ta be taken either to be the classical ones or the smooth automorphic ones. And the space AJP phi, phi of G is spanned by the derivatives of regu regularized values of Eisenstein series attached to the associate class phi. By proposition 10, we were able to prove the theorem 13, which states that for every associate class P, uh, class of associate parabolic subgroups whose representative P uh, uh, is written here, we have the decomposition of the space of smooth automorphic forms uh, in the space A infinity J phi of P of G. Um, so that are negligible along every parabolic subgroup which is not in the associate class of P uh, given by this formula. So uh, the summons in the locally convex direct sum are exactly the closures of these G infinity K infinity G of AF submodules. Of course, it would be uh, much more beautiful if we could define these closures in another way, not as closures of statuses of K-infinity finite vectors, but um, in a way that does not depend on K-infinity finite automorphic forms. Uh, but for this, we would need to uh, look at smooth automorphic Eisenstein series. And this is something we hope to address in our future work. Uh, so this is what I wanted to share today with you in this talk. Thank you very much for your attention. And once again, happy birthday, Professor Salim.